Hello and welcome. Do you think it's possible to grow porcini mushrooms in your home or your garden? By pressing the buttons on your computer screen, you'll see lots of websites, online stores, and YouTube videos trying to sell you porcini spores, porcini mycelium, and also methods on how to grow and cultivate this popular king mushroom in your garden or your home. You'll be promised to get unbelievable crops of 250 kilograms per year by using their methods successfully. It's much like gold, actually. So we've decided to visit our forest and try to find Bolita sedulis to try to grow them. Especially if you know that the price per kilogram can reach up to $200 US, it is much more expensive than any other delicacy. How much money can investors actually make off of this porcini farming if it was possible to grow these? If people could grow them, like table mushrooms, agaricus, or shiitake mushrooms, we spent a whole day in the forest trying to find one sample, but we had no luck. Instead, we found beautiful poisonous Amanita muscaria, lots of honey mushrooms, different species of the Rosella family, but there were not any porcini in the spots we normally found them in before. We almost lost a lot of hope and decided to go home when we spotted one very old and almost dead bolete. A cup of mushrooms would still serve our purpose. Now we're going to follow the instructions found on numerous websites. We're going to summarize that information so that you can see that those instructions are immature and given by people who have very limited knowledge of mixology and biology. But we're going to follow them anyways. We have to cut our mushrooms into small pieces, crush them with our hands, and place them into a jar. We're going to have to fill that jar with spring water and add sugar and yeast to wake up the mushroom spores somehow. Then we're going to cover the jar with fabric and leave it for two weeks in a warm place. Bolita sedulis is a basidiomycota mushroom, which, through the few stages of mycelium development, produces a fruit basidiocarp, which is an actual mushroom that we collect and eat. That mushroom has a sporous hemilium, where it can bear up to a billion spores. And why, would you ask, is it so difficult and almost impossible to grow these desirable mushrooms commercially and especially at home? The first reason is that Boletus is an ectomycorrhizal mushroom. Boletus sedulis is quite different from other macro mushrooms like saprophytes or parasites which feed on dead organic matter or living organisms accordingly. But instead, Porcini develops symbiotic relationships with trees like oak and pine in coniferous forests. The mycelium of mycorrhizal mushrooms create cage-like structures around the tree roots, providing the tree with fast-absorbing nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. The mushrooms receive, in return, products of photosynthesis, like sugar, carbohydrates, amino acids, and phytohormones. Now we're going outside to their backyard, where our fence is on the border between the park and our backyard. Lots of different trees grow there oak, pine, willows, and others. Checking again with the website's recommendations, we have to prepare 10 liters of rainwater, add 50 grams of sugar, three to four tablespoons of alcohol to kind of wake up the, the spores and make the mycelium grow faster. Then we have to sift our mushroom mixture through the mesh. Dissolve and mix all of the mushroom spores with the water all half a billion of the mushroom spores. The leftover mushroom mass is recommended to plant as well, although I don't understand why we have to sift it in the first place, but once again, we're following the recommendations. I also want to assure you that without a mycorrhizal symbiotic relationship, opportunity mushroom is not going to live for a long time because they cannot get enough nutrients because they do not feed on dead organic matter like saprophytic mushrooms, or because porcini cannot absorb nutrients from living organisms like mushroom parasites. That fact should make it clear enough to understand that the growth of Boletus edulis in pots or containers are it's absolutely impossible. And all of those recommendations about this are absolutely absurd. You're probably going to wonder, what about outside? in our backyard, under the trees where mycorrhizal development is possible. The second reason why you're not going to see mushrooms in your backyard is because the mycorrhizal mycelium is growing and developing, but very slowly. Only with trees older than 40 to 50 years old. From the moment the spore gets into the soil, 
Even with absolutely favorable conditions, all of the processes inside the ground would take up to 10 to 15 years. This explains why lots of the attempts have failed and this farming method is considered non-profitable. Besides, there is not enough knowledge and very limited data on how and why mycorrhizal relationships engage in the first place. Scientists' experiments show that this is a very complicated relationship between mushrooms and trees and another third party, which actually has not been discovered yet. We don't know what this third party is, but it plays a significant role. It could be some soil bacteria or another fungus or a group of both. In our park outside, there are many different trees growing. There are deciduous and coniferous forests like pine, cedar, oak, and birch. So it looked like an ideal place for Portini. According to some websites, we have to dig shallow holes within a meter radius around the tree and pour our mixed mushrooms spores into that. Some websites just recommend to put the spore solution without digging around the trees. So we're going to do both. After that, we need to water that thoroughly until all of the soil is very wet and keep it wet for a month. We have to cover the soil with as much mulch material like moss, wood chips, fallen leaves. It's better if you do it on a day when there's a full moon. And don't forget to say your magic words like abracadabra. After following each instruction, we're supposed to receive a huge mushroom crop the following fall. I'm joking, but seriously. Now I will explain the third reason why all of these promises are never going to happen. Mushroom mycelium can grow and spread significant distance. Just in 24 hours, the hypha of the mushroom can add up to about a kilometer in length. Boleta sedulis can easily develop spore rings up to 30 meters in diameter. So mushrooms aren't bushes, they're not, not trees. If you plant them near the fence, do not expect them to sit there and produce fruits right in the same place. The mycelium might produce fruits somewhere else, it may be in your neighbor's backyard, but they will not stay in the same place. So after all I said, do you still want to go online and buy mushroom mycelium from untrusted suspicious sellers who are promising you unbelievable crops? With who knows what they're selling you in that colorful package? Or do you even want to do something worse, like dig out mushrooms with mycelium in the forest and plant them at home? I encourage you not to do any of this. Please leave that mushroom in the forest, in their world, that world that we are never going to understand. Because 90% of the forest trees need mushrooms to live and to thrive. For the past 100 years, the population of Boletus sedulis has dramatically declined. People blame climate change, but completely forget that warmer temperatures and higher moisture are actually good for mushrooms. Then why is the population declining? I believe as a result of human activities, which reduce natural mushroom habitats like cutting the forest, building houses, and also a wide use of pesticides and herbicides. The toxic chemicals kill soil microbiota. I'm absolutely sure that what I'm doing here is complete nonsense, but I'm hoping that some of the spores may actually grow to the mycelium and possibly make some mycorrhizal relationship with some of the trees, and maybe in a few years from now, some mushroom fruits will actually appear five houses down the street or somewhere. I just hope. Thank you so much for watching. Leave all of your questions, comments, and concerns below, and don't forget to subscribe.